Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and in the last video, I went over some of the newest features in Bamboo Studio 2.2. And today, we're going to keep going. If you missed the first video, be sure to click up here in the corner so you can check out that one. Now, there's just too many updates for me to make this into one video, so that's why we split it into two parts. Again, I'm not covering every single little tiny change and update. I'm just covering the ones that I think actually matter when it comes to your 3D prints. So let's go ahead and jump back into Bamboo Studio 2.2. <laughs> Are your overhang seams ruining your prints? Well, this new feature tries to fix that. Bamboo Studio now detects overhangs and automatically moves seams to more stable areas instead of leaving them in weaker spots. That means fewer defects and stronger prints, especially on those tricky overhangs. So my question to you is, have you ever had any tall 3D prints fail halfway through or break off? Well, this feature slows things down where it matters most. You can now set the speed and acceleration to reduce gradually as prints get taller. It helps stabilize prints without slowing the entire job down. It's a great way to keep tall and thin models from wobbling or toppling over while still printing quickly at the base. And he let me show you how to do this inside Bamboo Studio. All right, so we're here in Bamboo Studio, and I have something uh, kind of tall and skinny. And this is really where this shines, this new feature. Now, if you see here, we have this tall little box, really skinny. And first, we got to look at our orientation, because obviously we do not want to print it like this. Because when the bed is going back and forth with our bed slinger, this thing can wobble back and forth and break off easily. So what we want to do is first we want to rotate it so it's a little more stable so when it's going back and forth now it's not going to be able to flap back and forth it's got the width of this entire print to be able to give it a little more rigidity now now that we've done that let's go ahead and slice our plate then if we come over here to color scheme we go to speed now speed we can see that it is pretty much consistent all the time when it comes to this outer shell. Now, if we actually bring this down all the way, we can see it does slow down for our very first layer because it gets about 50 when it comes to the infill and it's around like 30-ish, 36 on the outer walls. Now, you can see that because of the different color coding here. And it is the slower it gets, it's the more pink, and the faster is this green. So now that we've seen that, let's come back to our prepare tab, and let's come over to the speed tab right here on the left. Now that we see that, let's come down all the way here where it says slow down by height. Now this is where this new tool really comes into play. Now, there are a few settings, and they repeat. So we have our starting height, our speed at starting height, our acceleration at starting height. Notice we have our when we start, when our speed is, and our acceleration. Now look at this. Ending, ending, ending. This is, again, where do we end? Our speed at the end and our acceleration at the end. So this is what we have to set. These three parameters to be able to have a gradual gradation in speed at the very top. So this little uh, cube that I've made here or this like square or rectangle, this is actually 100 millimeters tall. So first I'm going to do say starting height, uh, let's say a 20, let's say 25 millimeters. And that is when all of this is going to start. Now, my speed at my starting height, I honestly, I think it should be whatever I have it set, it to, set to. So let's say uh, 200 is really where I want my starting height speed to be. Then my acceleration, I'm going to leave my acceleration of whatever I have down here in my acceleration. So 10,000. Uh, 10,000, let's just delete that down so we have 10,000. Then our ending height. Now, this is the thing here. 
Our ending height, I'm going to make it 101. So this is 100 millimeters tall, so it's going to be at 101 millimeters when it stops. Now we're going to look at the speed at the end. Now this is where I really want to slow this down. I'm going to say at the very end, I want this thing going 20 millimeters a second. Then when it comes to our acceleration, let's say I want this about 2,000 millimeters a second. So when it's moving the tool head, I want it to slow down that much. So now that we've got our starting speed and our ending speeds and where we start and where we end, let's go ahead and slice this. So now, if you see, we've got this little rainbow effect here. So essentially, now at 25% here, so which is about this area, it's printing normally. Then it's gradually starting to slow down. And by the time we get to the top, it's doing about 12 millimeters in print speed. So you can see how much slower this really gets at the very top. So this is something that is really nice to where I know if I've got a really like intricate print that is super tall and I want to have the quality as nice as possible, what you need to do is use this and slow down. Now, is this going to take a lot longer to print? 100% yes. But would you rather print something multiple times or would you rather print it once and print it the right way right out of the gate and slowing down is going to ensure that your quality is looking great and then you don't have any more wobble or anything like that like it is going to your surfaces are going to look great and your adhesion is going to withstand all of the movement because the movement is slowing down the higher this goes so this is a great tool and i definitely urge you to take advantage of this when you're dealing with these taller 3D prints, especially on a bed slinger. So recoloring your models just got a whole lot faster. The fill tool now has a mode that fills connected areas of the same color with just one click. It's like a bucket fill tool, but for 3D printing. This saves you tons of time when working on multicolor prints and making painting in studio much more precise. So let me go ahead and show you this new tool inside Bamboo Studio. All right, so we're all familiar with the painting tool and all of the features, but the paint bucket has some new features which are really, really nice, especially if you've spent tons of time repainting things. So let's go ahead and come into this little benchy. And if you noticed, I took the brush tool and I kind of scribbled a little line through here. It's a continuous line that jumps over different faces. And the old method would have, honestly, it would have taken quite a few clicks to be able to turn this all one color. So let's go ahead and click on our tool here and let's go into our painting tool and we see our paint bucket, our fill tool. Now, right here, we now have two different little options here. Edge detection, and this is what used to be. And this is where we can detect our angles, and also we've got our section view, which we've always had. Now, connecting the same color. This is the thing that is amazing. So edge detection, you can see here, if I wanted to, let's say, add another color, and let's make this color red so we can see it real well here. Now, edge detection, I would have to click all of these and you can see here, this is what I would have to do. Each click to be able to get this because of all of the different surfaces. And also, I could easily miss things because let's look underneath here. You see this bottom edge right here? I missed that. And this is the thing about this new feature that makes it so much nicer. So let's go ahead and undo all of this. There we go. So now we have all of this and I can just come over here to connect same color. And now if when I hover over it, look at this, look at how it just automatically selects everything. So with one click, we have just created a red fill instead of the white on all of these different surfaces. And I tell you what, I am so excited about this feature because it's one of those things you know if you know because 
being able to just change this easily is going to change my workflow immensely. Because if you are doing multicolor prints and you're having to recolor certain areas, this is going to save you so much time. And I guarantee there's some of you out there that are seeing this and are just like, oh my goodness, thank you Bamboo Studio. Because this is going to really affect a lot of my workflow and I'm sure it's going to affect yours too. But there's not a lot to this, but it is a lot to it when it comes to the time savings. Okay, so before we jump into the next feature, quick reminder. The doors to the 3D Print Guild are now closed, but you can join the waitlist. The Guild is my private community where we go deeper into 3D printing, 3D modeling, and painting our 3D prints. We've got live calls, extra training, and resources that you're not going to find here on YouTube. So, if you want to get notified the next time the doors open, hop on the waitlist with the link down below in the description. All right, so let's keep going with some updates that give you even more control over your 3D prints. All right, so finally, the text tool feels a little more modern. It's been beefed up a bit because it now supports more fonts, text wrapping, even negative text so you can cut letters directly into your model. Plus, fallback fonts make sure all of your characters display correctly. This makes it way easier to personalize your prints with cleaner, more flexible text options. So let me go ahead and show you some of those options inside Bamboo Studio. All right, so I've got this active project I'm working on to 3D print my own planner. And I thought this would be a great use case to show you the new text tool options. So this planner actually has on the front cover, it has a little insert right here to be able to slide in your own little tab right here. And I am going to go ahead and use one of these tabs. And unfortunately, I do not want to use any of these. I want this to just be like my name right here. So I'm gonna put Mead right here. And with this blank little tab that slides in, I'm going to click it. Then we're gonna click our text tool and you can see automatically our text shows up. So the first thing is, is I want to make sure that I have the font that I want. And it actually has landed on this because I've already made some, but you have so many text options now. So essentially, if it's on your computer, you can definitely use these. So if you want to, you know, I can mess with the, the spacing, which is my text gap, the angle, which is, you know, rotating it but you can see there are so many more options and you can also install your own texts as well if you wanted to so when it comes to your computer just install those fonts and then they will show up now when it comes to this i want to be using my zilla slab i really like this font then I am going to make sure my bold is on and then just come up here and I'm going to type my name, Mead. And when it comes to my rotate angle, I want it at zero. And when it comes to our spacing, I'm gonna get it kind of close. Uh, I like it when it's really close together. Uh, so we're gonna just kind of do that. Let's see, 0.5 maybe. Yeah, there we go, 0.5. Then I'm going to increase this font and let's just say 18. Let's see what that looks like. So let's go to 20, there we go, nice and big. And I'm gonna just move this and center this up. And that looks good to me. So now, this is the other things about this font now. All of, not only do we have more font options, but that, that right there is amazing. But let's go ahead and insert a primitive. Let's add this cube right here just to see what this does now. So if I click on my text here and I can even just with what I've got, I can just type mead and there we go. And now you can see how this is wrapping around. So I can easily just move this around here and it will wrap it for me. So you can still see that it will move it in weird ways, but this is the nicest part. It will automatically wrap. So if I actually turn this primitive into a cylinder, 
So I've changed this to a cylinder and now you can see that this is wrapping around beautifully. And now when it comes to how this is looking, I can I can change my thickness. So let's say I want my thickness I want my thickness to be 1, so I can thin that out a bit. And now I've got this and it is looking really nice. And also we can always change the filament color. So if I come over here to my filament, there we go. And now this is wrapping around beautifully. So that is a really nice feature of this. And also when we're dealing with this, we can use this as a cut so it will cut through. And when I slice this, it will cut holes in it. Now this is not ideal for what I'm doing because this A right here would just be completely loose and the middle of the E but that is something that is an option for you depending on what you're doing. Now, when we double click on it, we can go back into this and we can change our angle, obviously. And then we can also, which is really nice, it can be a part or a modifier. So I can change this to modify this in a certain way. So another thing I could do now that it's a modifier, I could easily just say my top surface pattern, I want this to be concentric. So then when I slice this, I am going to be able to see that is a name right here. So I'm, I'm just basically making it drag in my name on the very top line. So it'll be somewhat visible, but it's just kind of one of those things that would be kind of neat to see. But for this purpose, I want this to be right in the center. So I'm going to just double click on this again, go to my text. I want this to be a part and I want this to be centered. And I'm going to move this by grabbing the little yellow box. There we go. And then I also want to change the filament type so I can come over here to objects. I can r double click on it and click two. And there we go. And now you can see it's a part, but it's a little too high still. So I am going to say for thickness, I want it one millimeter thick. So now we can have our own custom font, which I think is an amazing new add to our text tools instead of just using those like five or six defaults that we always had. So now I have this 3D printed notebook and it turned out really awesome. And you can see this little tab here and I have the final print right here. And this really turned out nice. So all I've got to do is slide it in here. And yep, it goes in real nice. And there we go. So now I have my custom little notebook to take all of my notes. And it just, it really is nice. Even the rings are 3D printed. But that is all about this little text tool right here and what you can do with it. And it's a really great little tool to have, especially for these customizations like this. All right, and that wraps up the second half of what's new in Bamboo Studio 2.2. Now between this video and the last one, you've now seen the updates that I honestly think are the most important and the ones worth your time. If you missed part one, I'll link it down below so you can check it out. Also, if there's a specific update that you'd like me to go deeper on, let me know down in the comments and I might even make a full video just on that topic. And as always, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in this video right here, the first part, just in case you missed it.